Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, which many people find inspiring and motivating, and helps keep you in the right mindset in dealing with life's challenges. My special guest today is a super successful and highly respected restaurant entrepreneur whose concepts include Doraku, Blue Tree, Aoki Teppanyaki, Ching Mu, and 1938 Indochine. He is Kevin Aoki, and today we are going beyond restaurants. Hey, Kevin, Rusty. great to see you, Kevin. Oh, it's good to be on your show. Thanks for arranging all this. Thank you. Now, Kevin, how, how did you, I want to ask you then the beginning, you know, your background, you know, where you grew up at. I knew you grew up in New York. How was that experience for you? Yeah, well, my dad migrated to the United States with the Japanese Olympic wrestling team in the early 60s. And uh, he defected and he opened a small restaurant uh, called Benihana's. Um, and I was, I was born a couple years after he opened and um, uh, lived in New York about 10 years. And then uh, after my parents um, got divorced and I moved around with my mom to Miami, then to California. So Kevin, that, 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 little, that little restaurant, Benny Hanna, <laughs> that became a uh, world famous and i want to know can you tell me about the benny hana story how it all started like with your grandfather sure my my grandfather was a tap dancer um pre-war um and after the war in japan um people were hiding in caves they're you know they're homeless um and my grandfather wanted to create a place where his friends could um, all join in together and have and meet up. Uh, so he opened a little cafe called Benihana's. And around this little cafe, there was little red flowers um, that grew along the side. And uh, those red flowers were called Benihana's. Uh, and what the way that he made that place successful, um, his mission was um, uh, making friends through serving coffee. Um, so he would ride his bicycle at four in the morning uh, all the way to the inner cities of uh, Tokyo and get sugar ration, bring it back to his shop, Benihana, and he would open up this little bag and um, until the sugar was gone, it was free sugar with coffee. So people would come to Benihana's because um, they would be able to put sweetness in their coffee and, and uh, make friends there. Well, and then and your then dad... After that, uh, yeah, then your dad yeah, took it that, to the next level, huh? Yeah, my dad um, came to the U.S., um, wrestled. He was a um, very ambitious uh, young, young person. Um, he, had a, he, had, he was offered to wrestle, at, at, uh, become a wrestling coach. Um, but then he remembered, you know, well, he knows that his, his father had about 15 restaurants in Japan. Um, called his father up. His father came down with, you know, a group of chefs, and uh, they both created Benihana's together. Um, at that time, back in the 60s, there was a lot of anti-Asian uh, sentiment because it was after the war, um, and no one ate Japanese food. Um, to Americans, it was a slimy raw fish that they wouldn't even touch. So my father and his father thought of an idea, let's take American favorites, like steak, chicken, and shrimp, cook it on a grill and, you know, put a little soy sauce on there, uh, put a little Japanese flair, and, um, and it became successful. Um, it was a small restaurant, four tables. Um, and uh, my grandfather, being a tap dancer, loved the Broadway shows and wanted to put a little flair and throw the shrimp up in the air. And my father, um, they had the best teamwork because my grandfather was uh, an expert at back of the house um, training um, and, 
expert at food. And my father um, um, was really good with the media, loved marketing. Um, he was on the, on the Olympic wrestling team, so he was close to athletes like Muhammad Ali. So when he opened the restaurant up, uh, he would invite Muhammad, he would invite Sammy Davis Jr. He would invite, you know, you know, uh, all the celebrities um, and they all came and made Benihana successful. So it started out with one restaurant, then he opened up another one two blocks away from there and then went to Chicago, then went to California, then came to Hawaii in 1971. Uh, and then now today, you know, there's over 120 Benihana restaurants around the world. Wow, that's fascinating, Kevin. And I want to know, what are some specific things that you learned from your dad, Rocky? Um, I think, you know, as far as business, you know, um, uh, surround yourself with the right people because uh, you may think you're smart, but putting the best brains together, creating a nice rainbow of color of, of a team, um, make can can grow the company so I, I think i you know working at benihana um the reason why i think benihana became so successful is he assembled the right uh, team um, he assembled and then he and on top of the team that he assembled he put this process together so people can follow the process um, imagine having 120 restaurants and each restaurant has you know, 20 chefs working there. So each of those chefs has to follow this process. Um, so he created this amazing process that people can follow and developed a really good product. Um, so I, I, yeah, I, just looking at the success of my father, um, those are the type of things that I've um, put into my own company. Oh, that's really good insights, Kevin. And what is the biggest thing you learned from your mom? My mom, um, uh, compassion, um, love. Um, she's the most caring and giving person. Um, a very, very um, giving person. So I think, you know, my dad was just more of this hardcore business person. Didn't really care about anything but his business. And my mom, on the other hand, um, gave me the, the sensitivity, the love. Um, um, she pretty much was there during, every, you know, through my whole, you know, uh, opening my own business from, from after my dad passed away. Um, I opened in Waikiki and she was there um, helping me with finances. Um, she flew down and helped me open the restaurant. Um, but she, she was, she was there, um, you know, hands-on with me. And even to the, today, she's just caring and she's always worried about how my business is doing. Um, and she doesn't really care about the numbers. She really cares about uh, my mental outlook on things. Um, so she's, she pretty much is my motivator on, on growing and keeping, keeping my, uh, my, my drive moving forward. And Kevin, you're very close with your brother, Steve, who's a world famous DJ. And um, what do you, what is it about Steve that you admire the most? Steve, you know, um, he, he's kind of like the, um, he brings the whole family together. He loves um, camaraderie. He loves bringing the, um, like he lives in Vegas. He's my older sister living there, who's a um, famous, um, well, who's, who's doing really well counseling um, young adults. Um, but Steve kind of, he's the, the um, he's the glue putting us all together. Um, so, uh, you know, that I admire a lot outside of what he's done with his career. Um, you know, I admire that he's put all of us together and he, you know, he's, he's really focused on the family. Um, on his career level, that just, that's just amazing what he's done. Um, Cause I remember him DJing for 
for fifty dollars a night at these garages. Um, I mean, he, you know, he was just so passionate about music. Um, he used to work um, at at our restaurant. Um, my dad would ask me to take care of uh, any of uh, his kids that are younger than me at my restaurant or at his restaurant that I was managing. And Stephen came to Dallas, um, I think three summers in a row uh, to learn about the restaurant business uh, when I was a general manager there. And um, my dad was tough on me. So he made me clean the dishes. He made me work in the kitchen, sweep. I had to do everything from ground zero. Um, and it took me about two years to become assistant manager. Uh, but so I, when Steve came to work for me, I gave him the same uh, hard love, put him in the kitchen. Um, he was peeling onions for, you know, one month straight. Um, I'd walk in the kitchen, see tears coming down his eyes because the <laughs> onions uh, do that to you. Um, and then he wanted to, you know, he wanted to work in the bar. I didn't let him in the bar because <laughs> I wanted to show him, you know, it's not easy working in the kitchen. So he would be cleaning the dishes. Um, and uh, I think, I think I, I think I pushed him a little too hard. So he went off on a different career than uh, the <laughs> restaurant business, um, which probably was turned out pretty good for him. Wow, that's that's really that's funny. But you know, those things it, it helps because you have to know every part of the business. And Kevin, you know, in my books, uh, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, you know that I talk about uh, welcoming adversity. You know, looking forward to challenges, having the right mindset in you know really welcoming adversity. I want to ask you, how are what are you doing right now to navigate your way through this coronavirus pandemic? Um, I, I think, you know, um, adapting to change is really important. And um, since this pandemic is worldwide and everyone, it's either you adapt or you fail. So I, I, I think we've taken the, the approach that we're going to try to succeed. And um, we've been, all my restaurants, if the opportunity is there, we open up. Um, we have turn the whole restaurant into takeout and delivery. Um, I've changed out the point of sale system. So it's a cloud-based system. So it's easy to order online. Um, and instead of touching tables, we, now we have to really touch the computer and, um, and make sure that all the tablets are working on, on online tablets. Um, and then making the packaging is very important. So we have developed new packaging, new bags, um, you know, just, you know, when I think about a restaurant, I think about the journey of a customer calling up, walking through the restaurant, sitting down, getting their food. So now the journey is different. Um, so the journey of um, success in the restaurant business during the corona, during, during this pandemic um, is through online mediums, um, through whatever they touch, which is their takeout package, the food inside. Um, and then, you know, really focusing on Instagram, on, on you know, marketing to, to the customers that, that, are, that are out there. Um, so right now we're open. Um, the restaurant on Capilani, Duraku is open and does almost as well as um, it did when, you know, when, when the pandem pandemic wasn't there. Now that we have another restaurant opening, um, the, the noodle shop and the 1938, we're applying those um, those tactics here. Yeah, and Kevin, you know, looking back, uh, why why is Doraku such a successful restaurant? Um, I, I think you know when I opened Doraku um, 12 years ago um, in Waikiki. Um, Sushi was just really just taking off to the mainstream. And uh, I remember at that time, um, the, the only restaurants that really succeeded were sushi restaurants and steakhouses. So I, you know, I, I think sushi has that, that allure um, that, um, that, that customers want today. 
Um, and then for, for, for me to keep that life cycle going um, is really about just keeping the, the concept relevant and um, keeping the brand fresh and keeping the service and uh, everything um, consistent. So, um, you know, most restaurant life cycles, uh, they say it's about 10 years. Um, of course, the life cycle of restaurants is decreasing today. But um, for me to keep the Doraku successful over and over year to year, I think I, I had to keep it relevant, consistent, and um, appealing to the customers. Um, and I can't give up. It's, it's like the minute you give up, the minute you feel that this is where success ends, that's where you're going to start, you know, tipping on the downward trend. The success never ends. It just keeps going. You just have to keep reinventing and um, and trying to understand the customers as they get as new generations come up. Um, but you know, I, it, it's a it's a lot of hard work to keep a concept um, relevant from year to year. And Kevin, well, I love Doraku, and I also love your Blue Tree. And uh, what inspired you to open up Blue Tree? Um, well, I, I my brother and I have been always trying to um, make business together um, and knowing what my brother loves and, and uh, what he, uh, what drives him is um, health and wellness. Um, when I, when I go visit him, he's always worried about what he, what he eats. He's always exercising. Um, uh, and so I thought, let's create a concept together that embodies that lifestyle. Um, and I'm also getting older uh, and juicing and drinking smoothies and acai bowls and, you know, the vegan uh, options, all those things um, are great for your health. So, you know, Blue Tree, my last name is Aoki. Uh, and if you translate that um, to English, it's Blue Tree. Um, Ao is Blue and key is tree. Um, so my brother and I decided, hey, let's open one together. We opened two here in Hawaii. We just opened one in Anaheim Hills, California. And we have one in Japan. Um, and we're planning on opening in Las Vegas um, sometime next year. And Kevin, tell me about your Aoki Teppanyaki. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's one of my favorite restaurants that I have. Um, when my father passed away in 2008, I had to leave the, um, the Benihana company um, to go off on my own um, endeavors. Um, so when, after I left the company, um, I, I always wanted to, I, I realized that what I've learned, everything was through Benihana's and through Teppanyaki. Um, so I wanted to open a restaurant and go back to the basic concept of what my dad uh, put together back in the early 60s with Benihana's. I felt that Benihana was kind of morphing into a, um, to a restaurant that just, you know, serves food on a steel grill. I wanted to go back and um, bring what my dad brought to Teppanyaki, which was really to educate Americans about Japanese culture and cuisine. So I um, we created Aoki. Um, and if you walk through the restaurant, it's just, I, we took, it, it almost feels like you're walking through an alley in Japan, in Kyoto, where there's small little restaurants all over the place. There's gates, Tori gates. Um, so the atmosphere is just amazing. Um, as if you're in Kyoto in Japan. And the food um, we call Inaka style teppanyaki, which is countryside teppanyaki. Um, instead of just steak, chicken, and shrimp, uh, I wanted to elevate it to uh, what you would get in the countryside. So, um, you know, there's chicken liver on the, you know, there's uh, chicken hearts, there's uh, asparagus, there's all different types of vegetables. Uh, pumpkin cooked on the teppan grill. Um, our fried rice um, has 
three different grains of rice in there. It's got soba noodles in there. Um, and everything, it just looks like a nice, comforting food if you're Japanese. So I wanted to bring that to the US. Um, and I opened the first one in, um, in Miami, at uh, South Miami, in the Dayland Mall, which is doing pretty good. Uh, because of the pandemic, uh, seating in front and where the chef comes out is a little challenging, but we're, we're getting by all that right now. Well, Kevin, I, you know, I don't know how you keep outdoing yourself, but your brand new restaurant, 1938 Indochine, I absolutely love it. I mean, it's, it's like the inside, the outside, I mean, and then connected to Ching Mu. I, tell, me, tell me about both of those restaurants. Um, well, I've, since I've worked for my dad, um, one of the territories that he gave me starting Benihana was um, Southeast Asia. So I've been traveling to Southeast Asia for the past 20 years. And um, the past five years, I, I've just been fascinated and um, I just wanted to open a Southeast Asian restaurant. Um, when I, and when I'm in Southeast Asia, I'm always thinking, okay, the best food is found on the street. So I was thinking, okay, let's bring Southeast Asian street food to Hawaii. Um, and, you know, the decor was really critical. So um, every, every piece that you see in this restaurant was collected from Thailand, from Vietnam, from Indonesia, um, put into containers, brought here and assembled back up. Um, so really staying with the authenticity of the food, the authenticity of the design and decor, um, and uh, really trying to bring you know, um, Southeast Asian street food here. Um, this was probably one of my uh, most challenging and uh, exciting projects that I've done, just because it took so long. Um, just the build out alone took me two years to build out. Um, and it, everything was just tinkering. And um, it was like, a, like an art piece that never stopped. It was like a canvas that I just couldn't stop drawing on. Well, Kevin, you know, the, the details that you have in, you know, like you said, the decor in your restaurant, I mean, it's absolutely amazing uh, how you're able to, to do it. Everybody, all of my friends that go there absolutely love it, and we can't wait for it to open up again. And Kevin, I want to ask you, what is, you know, regarding business, what is the biggest challenge, the biggest adversity you had to face personally uh, during your time in business so far? Um, I think it changes over, you know, over time, but I think right now the biggest challenge is people. Finding the, uh, uh, finding people that are, um, uh, that are motivated, that are excited, that, um, that will help you grow your brand. Um, that seems like the, the most challenging, um, Part of the business right now yeah the people part for sure and you know again in my books i talk about leadership obviously creating a superior culture of excellence and that's what you do i mean you you're a great leader you have a superior culture of excellence how would you describe your leadership style kevin oh wow that's <laughs> that's tough um i think um i lead by example like I will never ask someone to do something that I am not willing to do. Um, and before I ask someone to do anything, I'm going to try it myself. Um, and I'm going to show them that I'm doing it myself. So I think, um, and, and it's changing because this new, new generation of um, em employees that are coming in um, really, um, I think that, that, Leading by example is very critical. So as I'm getting older, the more I'm actually doing the the daily operation um, because I need to lead by example. They need to see that I can do it, um, that, I, that I'm not afraid to do it, um, and then they will follow me um, when I do that. Um, if I just tell someone what to do something and not explain the reasons why, um, there's a good chance that when you turn your your head, they're not going to be doing uh, what you're asking them to do. 
So uh, I think leading by example, um, exp explaining um, the task, um, it, you know, so they understand why they're doing it. Um, it's probably um, it, it is, is the way that I'm kind of leading my staff right now. I, I like that, Kevin. I like that you said leading by example and, you know, because you're living your brand and people can see that. And then like you just said about how important communication is, you know, why, why are you having them do that? So really key parts right there. And Kevin, I want to ask you, when you reflect back on your life so far, what's, what's a valuable lesson you learned? That's, um, I think um, surround yourself with the right people um, because um, when you're working and you're driven and you're focused on building something, you become close to the people around you. Um, so finding that right team um, is, is not only mentally stimulating, it, um, uh, I think, it, I think that that's what drives me is getting the right people together, the right team. Um, and then also trying to bring your family more involved. Um, recently, my, my daughter, my daughter's um, working as a manager in my new restaurant. And it's, it's, um, it's nice to see that she's embraced um, some of my ideas and, and she's learning and she's becoming um, a more independent individual. Kevin, part of success is taking calculated risks. How, what are your thoughts about taking risks? Um, for me, it's more um, gut instinct. <laughs> you know, I mean, like opening a restaurant on the wrong side of the street, you could fail. So um, you could be in the right area, but the wrong side of the street. So it's... Um, it's you know learning you know putting all the the things that you learned all the mistakes that you've 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 had and creating you know that creates your instincts um and at the end of the day you just gotta trust your instincts um it's usually the the first thing that my mind tells me to do um and you know usually i just go with it Kevin, you know, I, I know you told me that your dad had passed away before any of your restaurant concepts had opened. I, I promise you, he would be so proud of you to see what you have done, how you've taken things to these highest levels. And I just want to thank you for taking time in your schedule to be on the show today, Kevin. No, it's a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure. Thank you very much for the time. And then I'll, I'll see you soon, okay, Kevin? Okay, look forward to seeing you soon. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Kevin and I will inspire you to strive for your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. <laughs>